Hey everybody, welcome back to Jay's Car Channel. In this video, I'll be doing a brief overview of this 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392. That's a mouthful, uh, but that's what this one is. And uh, you guys will know when you pull up on one of these what it is based on the uh, accents. So you see right here, you have the bronze tow hooks. It's a steel bumper. Uh, but yeah, the bronze accents on, on the uh, tow hooks, and then you also got bronze around the Rubicon decal, and also the 392 emblem with bronze uh, surrounding that. Looks pretty cool. And uh, the theme continues. You'll see it on this trail rated badge, and also down here inside the Jeep emblem, it's got some bronze accents. Um, so that that's something that will give it away. Uh, the other thing that will give it away. So if you're behind one and you see four exhaust tips sticking out, that, that lets you know, and you'll also hear it. So I'll turn this mic around, see if we can get some of this exhaust note on this 392. So that exhaust on this Jeep sounds awesome. I think they spent a lot of time tuning it and getting it to sound like it does. And to me, there's not a whole lot of vehicles out there that sound as good as this thing does. So this exhaust is pretty trick too because it has a setting on it where you can keep the flaps open all the time. You know, and depending on your neighbor's situation, you may not want to do that because it makes it louder. I think it's really awesome you can control that. So, you know, it's essentially some solenoids down inside the exhaust system that open the flap. Whereas, you know, if you use the setting to do it, it's open all the time. They will open at full throttle. So, you know, one or two ways of opening those. And this is a sting gray. I think this is one of the prettiest colors. And uh, kind of right now in the automotive world, it's one that started cropping up probably, I don't know, five or six years ago. And I think the first time I saw it was maybe on a Chrysler. 300c i think that was the first car i saw it on and now i see it on everything i see it on a lot of the chrysler products but then you know then there's like i've seen audis i've seen um what else tacomas toyota tacomas um kias you know hondas all kind of stuff i just i like this color though and i mean they're all variants right um there's a little bit of a lighter one that looks pretty good too i think the on like the challengers they call it smoke show but it's just a pretty color and i think it's a perfect color i like it because it this type of color looks clean even when it's really not unlike black which I mean, black is my favorite color in a car but because it looks so nice when it's cleaned up but it definitely can just look beat down after like one rain another thing that might give this away is this giant hood scoop up here so this hood scoop feeds in an enormous amount of air along with these front vents. I think these vents may be different on this. They may be a little bit bigger than they are on the, you know, standard Jeeps just for airflow purposes into that, you know, giant 6.4 liter V8. And uh, so I'm gonna pop the hood here. So here's what all the fuss is about. 6.4 liters, 392 cubic inches, 470 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. This is a Hemi. Gen 3 Hemi, it's named the Apache. And uh, if you know anything about Chrysler, you know they named their engines after warplanes and warships. The Hellcat engine is actually named after the F6F Grumman warplane, which was a fighter plane in World War II, and I think the most successful fighter plane in history for the U.S. Uh, armed forces. And this engine is shoehorned in here. You can see it's a really tight fit. So I would say this is an engineering marvel Another engineering marvel is underneath the hood, which weighs about 400 pounds. It feels like it's actually probably not that heavy, but it's pretty heavy because of this water guide system. It's called Hydro Guide, and essentially this is a water evacuation system to keep water from flooding your motor if you're going across a creek or floodwaters or something like that. If you're fording water up to 32 inches, 
this will allow the Jeep to keep moving through without hydro locking your motor. So if you see a Jeep that has a snorkel on it, that's basically what this is. And it's installed from the factory and it's pretty cool. It has all these little grooves and ducts and things in it that where the water will go and dump out instead of going down into the motor. So that's pretty neat, pretty neat stuff. The center of gravity is extremely high and that makes for a different experience when you have this much power. There's another guy on YouTube that talks about putting the Hellcat in this Jeep. And I think that's ridiculous. This 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, when you're experiencing the, in the 392 Jeep, it's insane. I don't know any other word for it, it's insane, because it's so high up. To me, I don't see any reason why you need 700 horsepower. 470 is plenty, and it's more than enough. I actually think it's too much, but do I love it? Oh yeah. So you'll see later I'm doing a POV drive on this video, and uh, I'll try to demonstrate what it sounds like, what it looks like when you're driving. And uh, I'm not sure I'll ever go full throttle in daily traffic, but uh, I'll try to give you a taste of what this 6.4 liter does in this vehicle. So there we go. That's just a little quick insight into what makes this vehicle extremely special, I believe. I mentioned it's raised, and if you go over here, you'll see it has Fox shocks, which are serious for off-roading. And you got a number of skid plates on um, this this is a skid plate here and then underneath there are shields and things like that to keep this vehicle from you know rock damage or whatever because it actually can articulate uh, it's more capable I believe than any other Jeep they've ever made so there's a guy that did a video showing what it could do how it could climb rocks and things so for the rock climbing aspect these are beadlock capable wheels these are 17 inch and uh, this is the beadlock system so right now it's not enabled but if you if you set the beadlock on these tires which are 33 inch tires you can lower the air pressure down to like 10 psi at that low pressure at that low tire pressure if you were just to do it on a standard wheel the tires would start to slip but on this these beadlock rims will actually keep the tire from slipping at low pressures so that's pretty cool so now let's go inside If you look at uh, when you start it, you'll see the gauges are going to do a sweep and then also in the information screen in the center, there's a 392 graphic and you'll see a little Jeep go across the bottom of the screen. It's like a Willys looking Jeep. So watch this. Here we go. There's your 392 graphic and then you see that Jeep going across the bottom of the screen. It's pretty neat. So. In this information screen you got all kind of things you can do and you can use these buttons here to toggle through so right now I'm on the digital speedometer if I go down one hit that button and go down one that takes me to the vehicle information screen so you can see I've got oil pressure and if I toggle to the right it takes me to oil life it takes me to battery voltage it takes me to tire pressure coolant temp trans temp oil temp and then back to oil pressure I don't like to keep it on this screen here because that's just one thing you can focus on whereas over here on your Uconnect you got an 8.4 inch screen I can take this and move it over and put into I can put it into off-road mode and once I pull that up that gives me all the different gauges I care about the coolant temp oil temp battery voltage trans temp and oil pressure and I always like to keep it on those just to see what's going on with the motor so I always keep this one on the digital speedometer so you just go up one and there it is so you can use these buttons to like I said toggle through and then you got your phone controls right here as well for your Bluetooth hands-free and then a neat little thing about the steering wheel as I understand it this little design these little three prong looking deals around the Jeep emblem are a throwback to the original three spoke wheels of the uh, Willys this vehicle is full of Easter eggs and all kind of cool details and that's one thing I really like about Chrysler they do a good job of putting little hints and and things in their vehicles that that harken back to something else or history of the of the brand or history of the vehicle itself I just think that's awesome and uh, this Jeep has a ton of them uh, over here you've got your adaptive cruise control setting 
and your cruise control. The adaptive cruise control, I believe, is a standard on this vehicle. So it's nice to have. So that basically just keeps your distance between you and the car in front of you at the speed you set. And uh, so then you go over and you got your HVAC controls, all this. Then down under here, this button is the uh, active exhaust button, which if you hit it, then it closes the flaps back using that solenoid. And then hit it again and it reopens it. So, you know, if you want, if you want the rumble, then you keep the raccoon eyes lit up. You got your stereo control here, which is a knob, which is awesome for the volume. And then mute button underneath. Then you got traction control, hazard warning, and then uh, I believe that's a snow setting right there. I'm not sure. And then this one is to turn the screen off. So hit it once, hit it twice. You know, that works. Then underneath here, you got your media port. You got USB-C connections and a 3.5 millimeter jack. You got your window controls inboard, which is, you know, pretty standard for Jeeps. You got a 12 volt outlet here. Down here, you got your uh, hub lockers front and rear and rear only. So you can select which ones you want to do. If you're doing off-roading activities, you got a sway bar disconnect. Uh, then down here, you got all the auxiliary controls. So if you wanted to hook up some different lights and control them from here, you can do that. That's what I see a lot of people doing. You got your four wheel drive selector, four high, four low. Here's your gear selector here. Uh, it's really cool, it's got a Willys Jeep on top of it. So there's another one of those Easter eggs. Uh, and then you got obviously cup holders here. You got an e-brake. And then you got your armrest, which has two layers of storage. So here's a little duck that somebody put on this Jeep. And if you guys know anything about the Jeep culture, the Jeep enthusiasts will go around and uh, put a duck on a on a Jeep if they like it. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's the top storage area. Then you got your lower storage area. It's got a USB port down there, and plenty of depth to put anything in there that you want to keep out of view or stored. Uh, you got a grab handle over here, and then you got your glove box. It's pretty deep, but it's full of manuals and discs. There's an airbag. They got a Rubicon 392 embroidered in the seat, which is pretty cool. Doors are nice. Dash is nice. I would say that uh, this interior is really nice for a Jeep. Uh, you know, compared to some of the older Jeeps that I've seen, I think they refreshed this one three or four years ago. And it's rugged, but it's also, you know, well appointed i mean i would say it's just it and it looks nice so other thing i'll mention is this vehicle has paddle shifters so that's a cool touch it's the first uh wrangler that's had paddle shifters and uh it's fun to play with but you're never going to be as fast as that 8 hp 75 and uh you know this also has gorilla glass um in the front windshield which it's made by corning and it's something to uh keep from getting rock chips or having to replace windshields and I think that's a good option to put on your Jeep if you're considering a Jeep. It has a one touch roof which is really nice so you just hit this button and the roof goes all the way back. I'm not going to do that right now because the sun is out there trying to kill people but in 20 seconds I can have uh, open air experience without having to undo anything or unclip anything. So, at this point in the video, uh, I'm pretty much done with my overview of this Jeep. I hope you found this informative. And now I'm going to move to the uh, POV drive. So, I actually did a nighttime POV drive, which I'll link to above. And uh, this one's actually, on this video, is going to be during the daytime. So, hope you like it. And uh, here we go with the POV. So, hey guys. Uh, here's the POV, as promised, in the daytime in this uh 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited 392. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of exhaust kick down for you guys so y'all can take that in and enjoy it. Maybe not as much as I do, but I'll go down through this little I'll go down through this little tunnel down here. You really better hear it good. Get this thing a little juice. Any 
anytime you go through an overpass with a car like this, it's almost mandatory. Give it a little bit. So here we go. Ooh. That's not even that's not even three-quarter throttle, that's half throttle. I'm afraid to put it all the way down. Uh so you know I'm not like the guy who thinks this needs the Hellcat. I don't believe it does. It does not need a Hellcat engine in this. Not even close. I mean, this is overkill. What's in this thing right now is way too much power. I mean, do I love it? Hell yeah. But do I think 750 horsepower is the right, or 797 or wherever they are now? I don't think there's any way in hell this thing would be fun to drive with that much power it would be dangerous it's already dangerous this transmission just shifts out just like you want it to I mean it's 8 HP 75 ZF German source transmission so it's proven and it works well in this back up buddy oh red light just another opportunity to Oil the tires. Looks like we got a storm rolling in. Or it actually may have bypassed us because it looks like it may be it's on the east side. Normally we get stuff coming from the west, so I don't know, it's weird sometimes. I guess it can just pop up wherever. Too much wind up here. Oh, these windows a little bit. Let's see if this BMW wants some. I don't think so. I don't think you want any of this, boy. thing actually rides pretty tight you know suspension wise and steering wise uh, I mean now is it the most accurate steering feel you're gonna get out of any no I mean not anywhere close it's vague and it's got some slop in it you know I mean there's some dead spots in the steering where you know you're not getting an immediate response as soon as you turn it it's got a little play in it and that's to be expected and I like the way it drives um, you know, it it just really feels solid and uh, I would say it feels pretty planted for, you know, being this high up. I, I don't ever feel like it's starting to lean too much or do anything crazy. Uh, you know, I think they really worked on tuning the suspension in this car quite a bit to handle, you know, all the power that they were gonna throw at it, which I'm still gonna say you know like it, it's too much power it's overkill I mean I, I think the old adage is you know you can never have too much of a good thing but in this case I'm gonna you know say that there is too much of a good thing in here there's too much horsepower and I never thought I'd say that but you know that's my take on this vehicle I, I love it it's awesome 
uh, and I'm not here to bash this vehicle at all. I mean, I, I really do like it a lot. And everybody I know that's ridden in it or that's looked at it or anything, everybody else loves it too. You know, yeah, man, it's a ton of fun. Two tons of fun, you know, two and a half tons, I think, of fun. So, I'm a big fan of this of this vehicle. And I think, I think it uh, came along just at the right time. I think that, you know, it was getting to a point where you had all the Bronco rumblings. And I think, if I remember correctly, there's a cool Jeep. If I remember correctly, the, you know, they had already had a prototype for this kind of running around and, you know, people were talking about it. They, they had shipped, they had, they had put some a V8 inside of a, a prototype, so they knew they could do it. And then when Ford announced the Bronco, I think that same day, they uh, <laughs> they just sprung it on everybody and said, yeah, we're putting a 6.4 liter in the Wrangler. You know, and I think that's just awesome that, that these companies are in such com competitive, you know, they're so competitive against each other that it raises the bar across the board, you know? You know, if any of the big three, if any one does something, the other two take note and they try to do it better. You know, we all benefit from it because, you know, whenever Ford goes out and makes a Mustang that has 500 something horsepower, then, then Chevy, you know, gives the Camaro 550 and then the Challenger is sitting there, you know, it's left behind at first because it's got 425 with the SRT8 or whatever the number was with the six point, I think it was a 6.1 liter Hemi. And then they just said, you know what? We're going with 700 horsepower, actually 707. And uh, it just, you know, goes to show that one of them, you know, one automaker started pushing the envelope the second one did and then the third one did and they, they're all pushing the envelope now you know and and they always have been but it's just where that one guy goes the next guy tries to, to surpass it so i just i guess i'm saying that it's good for all of us you know and it's awesome and I, i'm glad to be around for this so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video here if you like this video please hit that like button and uh also if you haven't subscribed please subscribe hit that subscribe button and uh that way you'll be able to be notified when the when I put another video out. I'm trying to put out as many videos as possible. I really hope you guys like the content. If you got any suggestions, questions, or anything, please hit me up in the comments. Thanks, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.